Welcome to a new Football Manager 2019 series and my first foray into the jungle of YouTube content creation where I will attempt to take the mighty green lions of Guernsey Football Club to domestic and international glory and hopefully before FM 2020 comes out. Uh, my name is Andy and this is my channel PSC Plays. Before we get started, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Benji FM, Second Yellow Card and Lelujo for their hours of quality Football Manager content that sparked this desire in me to do a, a, a YouTube save and also to the FM editor for his hard work in producing the Level 10 database that I'm using for this and we will discuss this database a little bit later on. Well, why Guernsey I hear you cry? Well, of all the non-league possibles, and I did decide to do a non-league save because basically, why wouldn't you? Um, Guernsey's a bit of a unique case geographically. It's only 15 miles off the French coast, uh, that's Brittany and Normandy, um, but it's also 60 miles away from the British mainland. This means that any travel to and from the games for Guernsey and their opponents is gonna be by airplane. Uh, in this case via or in the airways um, and for this league London Gatwick that you can fly in from lots of other places uh, indeed the Toronto Wolfpack in Rugby League Championship do have a very similar setup where they foot the bill for both they, they and their opponents travel so in this case it's a club with quite a bit of a difference compared to the mainland teams it might make the challenge of this getting the team up to the upper echelons of the English football pyramid just that little bit harder and more interesting. Now firstly, here's a short VT about Guernsey and Guernsey Football Club. Guernsey is one of the Channel Islands, along with Jersey, Alderney, Sark and a few small islands. It has a population of around 63,000 people, which is on a par with towns such as Bangor in Northern Ireland, Wrexham, Stourbridge and Maidenhead. These 63,000 people live in an area of 65 square kilometres, or one ninth that of Greater London. Guernsey FC was founded in 2011 and entered the English Football Pyramid in the 10th tier, the Combined Counties League Division 1, being promoted in successive seasons to their current league in Tier 8, the Bostic-sponsored Isthmian League Division 1 South. Their nickname is the Green Lions, and their chairman is Mark Letissier, which is a surname you may or may not be familiar with. Matt did indeed play one match for Guernsey in the 2012-13 season when there was a fixture crisis caused by postponements resulting in Guernsey needing to play 17 matches in one month. Guernsey play at Foots Lane, a multi-purpose stadium with a capacity of 5,000 and their record attendance of 4,290 was versus Spennymoor in the semi-final of the FA Vars in 2013. Welcome back. Um, as you can see on the screen, we've got a nice little welcome from, from Mark. 650 quid a week, which at this level is pretty good. Um, if we just quickly have a look at the, the homepage. Um, notice a good finance set, uh, set up here. 46,000 overall balance, which for something at this level yeah, is very, very good. So hopefully uh, with a, a ground that's got a 5,000 capacity as well, we can really build on that and get the attendances up. Yeah, we've got a captive audience of 65,000 people on the island, so yeah, hoping that just sort of we can get above the two, three, four hundred people per game that you normally get at this level uh, and go on a little bit further. Um, so the, the projection, though, unfortunately, on this, if we go and have a look, is not brilliant, but then I've never seen a projection screen in Football Manager 2019 that actually really means anything, so not that fussed about that one, to be fair. If we have a quick look at the squad, um, first standout there is our best goal, best, best player is a goalkeeper, which very rare, I've not really seen that much at all, Callum Stanton. Uh, comes from Bournemouth originally, uh, never got any game time, but looks a very, very solid player. Uh, on the best contract out of the whole club as well, 325 quid a week, which at this, this level is, yeah, is, is pretty goddamn high. Um, yeah, apart from that, we're We've got some pretty good ability. Uh, Tom Delamere, um, defensive midfielder, midfielder, central. He wants to be a midfielder. He wants to play centre midfield, but because defensive midfielders are so difficult to come across, um, especially at this level, then 
might have to play him in defensive midfield. I'm going to take a view on that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Harry Tobin, 24. So we've got some, yeah, a good good youngsters. But Harry Tobin, nice to have a decent left back. Um, wants to be a full back, though is also natural at playing wing back, um, which could be very useful going forward. Uh, gives you the option to play so many more different tactics. And then we've got Frank Tobin, which I shall imagine is brother. 23. Um, we'll be pretty close together. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, yeah, well, whatever. I'll have a look at that for later off, off camera. Um, but yeah, Frank, again, pretty good. Wants to be a, a good centre back. So it's, looking at things, we've got a pretty decent back line, I think. We'll want to play around and get some uh, decent left and right backs in his cover. But um, over and above that, yeah, we've got Charlton Govain, good midfield central. Uh, notice I've changed the, the coloration of all the, the stats and we're starting at 12 for amazing um, 9, good 6 average and then under 6 is the red um, that will go up as we go up the leagues if we go up the leagues, hopefully we will get up the leagues but yeah, we'll, we'll change that as and when um, if I go to the staff now I'll look at the staff because this will drive us then looking at the team report because we have an assistant manager called Steve Sharman so 150 quid a week looks good wants to be data analyst coach or assistant manager and has pretty decent working with youngsters good level of discipline not bad for this level to be fair not bad um, we also have Colin Fillets as a coach very very good fitness um, coaching at this level which is very very useful because this is the one This these sorts of levels are where you, you want natural fitness high uh, that will make the biggest difference, I think. And then we've also got a goalkeeping coach called Chris Heyman, uh, who's got fives on the goalkeeping, which, yes, is not brilliant, but at this level, it, yeah, it's doable, definitely. So if we look at our team report, um, notice quite a lot of greens. At this level, you won't get that many, but we've also got lots of ambers and reds. Um, the big part of the greens I see, we've got a decent level of agility, and we've got a decently high level of technique for this level, which I think would be useful and will drive how I want to play the tactics. Um, unfortunately, that's a, oh, that's a, fortunately, we do have a good level of vision and creativity as well, which again drives me towards playing a more control style, especially at this level. Uh, that obviously changes, we get new players in and whatnot, but to start anyway, I think we'll, go, we'll try and do a control position and we'll have a look at the tactics. Um, but our weaknesses are we can't cross we can't head we can't tackle we can't take corners we ain't no good at long throws either um, we can't take penalties so I'm thinking we don't drive towards trying to play uh, play for the, the free kicks play for the set pieces because I don't think there's any point we have got a couple of tall players but I, I think after the last couple of updates the the, the the crossing exploit has been taken out of it the heading the free kick um, bad poor defending from the AI has been taken out of it so I don't think there's much point in playing that one um, so we'll go to the tactics this is one I'm looking this one I'm thinking at at the moment is playing a 4-4-2 diamond narrow because we can't cross and because we can't head I don't see any point in having any wingers not at this point anyway and the wingers we've got aren't brilliant either they're sort of 2 2.5 two star which is nah, they're, at this level two and a half stars is a bit pretty bad so what I'm going to play is yeah pack the middle play down the middle um, we're going to counter press on the transition so as to try and keep it all nice and tight in the middle to so basically overrun the middle and try and play through but play counter and positive counter because we've as I said there we've got we're, we're pretty good with vision we're pretty good with technique for this level, hoping that will then play through and we'll be able to take control of the games. Um, out of possession, yeah, literally just try and squeeze it and squeeze the teams. I'm not so worried about wingers coming in. We've got two fullbacks playing on the defend, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, both of them are, are pretty good. Gil, yeah, we, we can have to possibly get another person in for him to take over. Uh, De La Mare, I'd, I'd love to play him in the midfield because he's four star when he plays in central midfield but at the moment we've got really 
central defensive midfielders and they're rare I'm going to play him in defensive midfield and let's see if we can find somebody to take his place so he can move up Govain useful so is Dominic Home as well uh, we've got a, a Portuguese called Kenya um, Carlos Kenya in the uh, attacking midfield he's our only real attacking midfield use, uh, person so we're going to have to get somebody in to, to really take over at the well not so much to take over but back him up but he's not bad not bad player uh, we do suffer though um, up front we've not really got much if I look at squad depth um, looking at 4 4 2 Diamond Arrow you're talking two stars which is not brilliant um, we do have some real solidness in midfield uh, we do have solid sort of cent centre back area so it's, we're playing this down the middle and we're, we're going to yeah hopefully overrun teams that is the way I'm going to have a look at it yeah looking at the season preview mm -hmm. We um, are looking at being 10th, 6-1. Um, I think we've got a better chance of, of, of than 10th. I think mean, we'll be good for at least going through this crazy playoff. But, um, yeah, we've got Callum Stanton as a star in goal there, which is brilliant. By, uh, yeah, Kieran Mahan is also shown as one of our stars as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Was playing middle as well, but he's not... Mm. I possibly might be using as a Carolero backup. I don't know. I, I, I've got a better Carolero than him to shuttle between defensive midfielder and attacking midfield. But um, yeah, if we do end up playing wide players, he's not a bad winger. Um, I would. I never really tend to play the normal left and right midfield though. I'd always play him up. Always play him in the attacking midfield area, and he's not so brilliant at that. Though that could be trained. Um, but yeah, going back to the competitions, um, Bostic South East. Let's have a quick look at the way this works at this level. The English non-league pyramid for tiers 7 and 8 looks a little bit like what you see here. Evo Stick and Bostick sponsor the leagues. And tier 8 has 7 divisions. 2 for the Northern Premier, 2 for the Southern League and 3 for the Isthmian. When you get to tier 7, there are only 4 divisions. 1 in the Northern, 2 in the Southern and 1 in the Isthmian. This leads to some issues with some boundaries between divisions, but it also leads to issues with the promotion and relegation. Promotion from Tier 8 to Tier 7 is a bit of a nightmare at the moment. Twelve teams need to be promoted from Tier 8 to Tier 7 into the four divisions, but when you've got seven leagues, that makes the numbers a little bit funny. You have the seven league winners, and then you've got five more teams that need to come up, and they come through a super playoff structure that's... Uh, frankly a little bit crazy indeed it does mean that some teams will get into the finals of their playoffs and realize they can't possibly be promoted because their points per game average is not high enough the fm editors database deals with this slightly differently which leads to five playoff finals and therefore the last five places to go up this is in fact i think a lot better than reality is at the moment so where are we going in the future? So we've got here on the, the schedule for the, the upcoming games. Um, I reckon what we'll do is we'll come for the first game, Haywood Heath, at home, um, middle of August. And what we'll try and do is get through the league pretty quickly at this level. I'm thinking most probably come back for, yeah, FA Trophy and a Faversham. I, 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 think we're going to have an FA Cup game in the middle here it's just not been drawn yet so um, maybe an FA Cup game um, the league at this level um, yeah I'm, I'm going to try and run for it pretty quick so yeah looking forward to it um, if you really would be good enough to put a, a thumbs up on this that would be amazing I know we're not going to have that many people watching it at this point um, but hopefully in the future you never know might, might have a few people come in and have a look um, anyway goodbye from me and hopefully see you for episode one of season one in tier eight Guernsey FC see you soon